Hi, I'm Michael Cicchetti, a lead and well professional with Green Building Education Services, GBES.com. We've been helping thousands of people like you pass their lead exam since 2007. In this video, I want to provide you with our top 10 tips on how to pass your exam. But first, before we dive into the top 10 tips, let's start with a little overview of lead. So if you're new to the concept or new to green building, you might be asking, what is LEAD? Well, LEAD's an acronym that stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So what does that mean? LEAD is a green building rating system that provides a systematic process for designing, building, operating, and maintaining sustainable buildings. Consider this analogy. LEAD's like a recipe for a dish. There are some ingredients that are required and some that are optional, but the end result is a building which is more sustainable than other buildings built in a traditional way. So, essentially, LEAD is a checklist of items that, if followed, yield a green or sustainable building. So what is LEAD for? LEAD is for both buildings and people. Buildings get certified and people get accredited. Bonus tip for you, you may see that question on your LEAD Green Associate exam. So how do you take the first step towards becoming a LEAD Green Associate? Well, in order to become a LEAD Green Associate, one must study for and pass a 100 question multiple choice exam at a local Prometric computer lab testing facility. Prometric has partnered with the USGBC or US Green Building Council, the nonprofit organization behind LEAD, to offer the exam through any Prometric testing center. Usually, there's a Prometric computer lab not too far away, and you can choose the day and time that you want to take your LEAD Green Associate exam. The bad news is that it's a closed book exam, and you're limited to two hours to take the 100 question multiple choice exam. The good news is that the exam isn't too difficult. And the rest of this video will give you great tips on how to pass the exam on your first try. Also, we have the number one selling lead exam prep tools that you can utilize if you decide you want to become a lead green associate. We'll provide a 10% discount code for you at the end of this video, so be sure to stick around for that. The lead AP exams are very similar to the lead green associate exams. There are 100 questions, they're closed book, they're taken at a local Prometric testing center. However, they focus primarily on a single lead rating system, such as BD plus C, IV plus C. It's going to be more detail oriented and you're going to have to memorize more numbers and study a little harder for the AP exams. And now, our top 10 lead green associate exam tips. Tip number one, keep your studies high level, meaning you need to know a little bit about a lot of different concepts. Don't get too detail oriented in your studies for this exam. Just have your own definition of the key terms and the green building concepts you learn about. You'll need to do some applied reasoning for your exam, but if you're familiar with all the concepts, you can work through the question in your head to find the best answer. Tip number two, don't worry about memorizing too many numbers. Out of all the numbers you need to know for the Lead Green Associate exam, there are only about a dozen numbers that you have to memorize. So don't try to memorize all the numbers you come across. In our professional opinion, if it isn't one of the following numbers, you likely don't need to memorize it for the Lead Green Associate. NPRs, minimum program requirements. Memorize all those numbers and the requirements themselves. You need to be familiar and know the four main ASHRAE standards that lead references, 90.1, 62.1, 55, 52.2. You need to know how many lead credits go into the different certification levels, for example, certified silver, gold, platinum. You also need to memorize the half a mile and quarter mile radiuses as they relate to transportation and number of diverse uses you might even have to do a density calculation based on square footage. Uh, and the only other calculation you might need to know is the FTE full-time equivalent calculation. Uh, be familiar with MERV filters, and the higher the filter, the higher the air filtration. Maybe a couple of Squawkman rules and ISO standards you come across. Uh, finally, just a few numbers related to the Montreal Protocol. And that's about it. Tip number three, read each question on your exam twice before reading the answers. Often a lead green associate exam will try to trick you by sneaking in an important word like not or isn't, so it's helpful to read each question twice. Tip number four, read all the answers on your exam. You must always choose the best answer. A lot of questions will have multiple right answers, but you always have to look for the best answer. For example, implementing a concept that reduces carbon emissions will be a better answer than one that promotes a local economy or reduces water consumption. The way the USGBC prioritizes answers in order of importance are reducing carbon emissions, reducing ozone depletion, improving air quality, preserving water, protecting ecosystems, protecting natural resources, then promoting local economies, community health, and quality of life. Tip number five, know what LEED stands for. 
there's a good chance you'll get a question along the lines of, what does LEED stand for? We mentioned it earlier in this video, LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Tip number six, know how to properly abbreviate U.S. Green Building Council and LEED Green Associates. The correct answers are USGBC, all caps, spelled out, never United States Green Building Council because the USGBC is worldwide. The other way is U.S.GreenBuildingCouncil. And LEED Green Associate, you can abbreviate after the C, but that's the only way. Never LEED GA. Tip number seven. Know the difference between a project that's LEED certified and a LEED certified project. When you use the capital C in certified, it refers to a project that has met all the NPRs, prerequisites, and has earned between 40 and 49 credits. Using the lowercase c in certified means that the project could have earned any certification level. For example, certified silver, gold, or platinum. The USGBC has done a great job with branding and continues to do so. Therefore, they want you to know the proper ways to refer to the lead brand. Tip number eight, use memory tips when studying. One must learn a lot of new concepts to do well on the lead brand associate exam, and memory tips can help. Professional memory experts use weird associations in order to more easily remember things. For example, there are four main ASHRAE standards that lead references on your lead grant associate exam. ASHRAE 55, thermal comfort. So I think when I'm cold, I cross my arms, I have five fingers on each arm, ASHRAE 55. Tip number nine. After you've been studying for a while, join one of our lead grant associate study sessions, either live or watch a recorded one for many more tips like these. You can find future study sessions, webinars, and recorded study sessions at gbs.com slash live hyphen webinars. Or click the link above or find the link in the description below. Tip number 10. Start with our free resources that you can easily download at gbs.com slash exam hyphen prep. We have three great materials for you. First, the Lead Candidate Handbook. It's only about 14 pages and it gives you guidelines on how to sign up, register for, take, and pass your exam. If anything, use this to reference how many questions come from each of the lead concepts. They give you an exact breakdown of how many questions come from each concept. Secondly, we give you a 30-day study plan. It's just a good reference if you're trying to pass the exam in about a month's time. But most importantly, the third free download is a glossary of key terms. It has 257 of the most commonly tested terms and definitions, so be sure to check that out and use it as a valuable study tool. Bonus tip for you. After you began your studies, go ahead and pick an exam date a couple of months out, maybe a couple of weeks out when you think you want to take the exam. Having that date over your head is going to be great motivation for you to keep a good pace with your studies and go on to pass and become a League Green Associate. So you got this. The exam isn't too bad and we, GBS, are here to help you pass. One of our core values is encouragement. So if that's what you're needing to take your career to the next level, let us know. Leave us a question in the comments below or you can reach our team of green building experts by emailing customercare at gbs.com. Thank you so much for watching and since you made it to the end of this video we want to give you a 10% off coupon code. Go to our website gbs.com, find the tools that are right for you and simply use the code YTTOP10 to save 10%. In case you were wondering, I personally recommend our League Green Associate Platinum Pack because it's all of our great study tools in one bundle. There's nine hours worth of on-demand video that you can watch and listen to. You can get access to our 287-page searchable PDF study guide. It teaches you pretty much everything you need to know about the concepts that are tested on the Lead Green Associate exam. Or you can download the MP3s and listen to them in your car on the commute. They give you flashcards, and probably most importantly are exam simulators that really mimic your actual Lead Green Associate exam. They give you great feedback as you're studying and learning on why you got the questions right or wrong, which concepts to study more or less, and when you're ready to go in and pass your exam. So thanks again for watching. We really appreciate you. And if you've enjoyed this video and found a lot of value in it, feel free to like and subscribe. We wouldn't mind at all.